Francis, long time no see. I can't believe how long it's been. It's me, Alyssa. Do we know each other? I don't have any recollection of an Alyssa. Goodbye. Hey, just wait a sec. Don't be like that. What are you talking about, Cassia? It's me, your little sis. Alyssa, it's only been eight years. You can't actually be saying you forgot me already. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. I don't remember you at all. I don't need the kind of low-life trash who would steal someone else's boyfriend occupying my precious memories. I don't have a sister. Oh, good grief, Cassia. Would you just, like, get over it already? Are you really going to spend your whole life crying over spilled milk like this? You can't sulk forever. It's not good for you. That was way back in high school for crying out loud. We were basically kids back then. I swear, it's always nag, 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 nag with you. Have you ever considered that maybe you acting like this is the reason why the boys always flocked to me and never gave you a second look? What do you even want? Did you message me after eight years of total silence just to start a fight? I made it clear. You were never to contact me again, unless it was an emergency. To be honest, I did just want to block you and cut you out of my life completely once and for all. But if I did that, I'd have no way of reaching mom. Believe me, I hate still having your name in my contact list. I didn't feel like I had a choice. You knew all this though, didn't you? In spite of that, here you are. After eight years bombarding me with petty, immature attempts at starting an argument. If that's how you're gonna act, then maybe I should just block you, like I should have done a long time ago. Oh, Cassia, how can you be so cold? It's hard to believe we're related. Me being such a little ray of sunshine and all. Anyway, this conversation is boring me now. The reason I messaged you today, well, there are two reasons. Firstly, I have something to tell you. Secondly, I have a favor to ask. Something to tell me? A favor? That's right. Okay, here it comes. I'm getting married. Well, incredible, congrats. Not only that, but I'm pregnant with this baby. We decided to get married when I found out I was pregnant. Aren't I just the luckiest girl? Yep, amazing. We done now? Cool. Bye. Cassia, stop this. I just gave you the most important news of my life and this is your reaction? Why are you so desperate to get rid of me? Do you hate me that much? Anyway, no, we're not done. Like I told you, I need to ask a favor too. Make it quick. I'm very busy and have important things to do. Like you, who seems perfectly content wasting her time on trying to drag long dead relationships up from the grave. Just listen, sis, okay? Like I just told you, when I found out I was pregnant, we decided to get married, right? Now here's what I need you to do for me. I need you to divorce your husband. Excuse me? Divorce my husband? What? I don't even... Isn't it obvious? If you and your husband don't get divorced, I won't be able to get married. That's why you have to divorce him. I don't think it would be possible for me to understand this any less right now. You must have lost the single brain cell you had over these last eight years. Because you're talking crazy. Unless you start making sense, we're done here. Hey, actually, wait. How did you know I was married? I know for sure I didn't tell either you or mom. Your husband told me. I can't believe you got married in secret. Who even does that? Do you really think it's okay not to tell me about something that big? Not cool, sis. Dad was furious too. You should have seen the look on his face when he found out. Oh, come on. There is no way in a million years I was ever gonna let him know. Try looking at this from my point of view. Why would I tell the scheming lowlife who stole my husband or the double-crossing dad who blindly covered for her anything at all? To tell you the truth, I did want to tell mom because she was the only one who actually had my back throughout the whole thing. But I knew that if I did, it would only be a matter of time before word made its way to you. At which point, I probably would have had to deal with your petty games all over again. So I decided it wasn't worth it. But that was back then. I can honestly say, I don't care at all now. So tell me, who's your fiance? The only people me and my husband told about our wedding were his parents and both of our close friends. What's that? Curious, are we? Is someone just a teeny weeny bit curious? Hmm, should I just tell you and put you out of your misery? Stop wasting my time. Just hurry up and tell me. My fiance is Ryan. Huh? Ryan? That's right. Ryan. 
I think you know who that is, don't you? He is your husband, after all. <laughs> Excuse me? Yep. I'm pregnant with your husband's baby. Oopsie. I'm so sorry. Looks like I stole your happiness all over again. No, 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 no. Just hold on a minute. What the hell are you talking about? You and Ryan are getting married? <laughs> you have to be joking me. Are you serious right now? Look, sis, it's perfectly understandable that you wouldn't want to believe it. It must sting like hell. I get it. I really do. But I'm sorry to say, it's 100% true. It was Ryan who told me you two got married. Yep, that means your husband himself told me. You just don't get a more credible source than that. He's one of the higher-ups at the company I work at. But, no. Wait, what the? You and Ryan? Why would you two? How did you meet? He's one of the higher-ups at the company I work at. We were chatting in the cafeteria when he told me he went to the same college as you, so I asked him about you on the off chance. I almost spat out my spaghetti when he told me he was your husband. We carried on speaking after that, grew closer and closer, and before you know it, I'm pregnant with his baby. Oh, so that's how. I see. Yep, that's how. So hurry up and divorce him for me, okay, sweetie? I know it must hurt but you wouldn't want to get in the way of our bright future together, would you? Me and Ryan are getting married. Listen, Alisa, you can tell me to divorce him all you like, but there's just no way I can do that. Why not? Of course you can. What's the problem? You two don't have kids together, and he told me you practically live separately these days. I'm doing you a favor here. You can finally be free of your stale, loveless marriage, and I get your husband. It's a win-win! All it takes is one set of signed divorce papers, and you can move on with your life. It's true. A married couple can decide to end things with just a few pieces of paper. But that's not the problem here. I don't want to hear your whiny excuses. Just hurry up and divorce him so I can have my man all to myself. If it's compensation you're after, don't worry. I'll pay. Compensation? You'd pay compensation. To me? Yep, that's what I said, isn't it? Don't get me wrong, I'd rather stick pins in my eyes than give money to the likes of you, but Ryan says it's important we get married before the baby's born. He said if we don't, it'll be born out of wedlock or something like that. I don't really understand, but he said it'd be bad for our reputation and our baby would never get a good job, and I definitely do not want that. So if paying you off is what it takes, so be it. So he doesn't want the kid to be born out of wedlock? I see. But why would you pay me compensation? I still don't get it. Well, this whole thing got me thinking. And I figured that when people divorce, most of the fighting is usually over possessions and money, right? Which is why I figured I could just pay you off to hand Ryan over to me. With that, you'd quit your complaining and I'd have your husband all to myself. Do you understand now? Okay, great. Now be a darling and go hand in those divorce papers. If it's money you want, I'll pay whatever you want. Hmm, okay. I see. I think I finally understand where you and Ryan are coming from now. Okay, fine. I'll do exactly as you say. Really? Thanks so much, sis. You're the best. So, how much do you want? Don't hold back. You can have as much as you like. Just say the number. I don't need your money. Forget about the compensation. OMG, really? The idea of receiving even a single cent from you makes me feel physically sick, so I'd rather just go without. I don't want to be the thought of someone who goes around extracting money out of her little sister either. How about you put it into a savings account for the kid's future instead? Wow, really, 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 really? Thank you so much. Even after stealing your husband, you're not going to ask me for any compensation? I couldn't ask for a better sister. Woohoo! Looks like me and Ryan are celebrating tonight. I need to get the drinkies in. Did I ever tell you that I love you, Cassia? Because I do. That's nice. I hate you. We're done here. Goodbye. Don't worry. You'll be hearing from me when I have my beautiful baby. Toodle, sweetie. Hey, sis. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I had my baby this morning. He's a beautiful, healthy, energetic baby boy. Why are you talking to me? I know I made this clear when you two got married, but apparently it didn't go in, so I'll try again. I neither need nor want to hear updates about your life. What I need is for you to stop messaging me forever. I literally couldn't care less about you 
You can be as mean and nasty as you want, but it's all water off a duck's back to me. Nothing could faze me right now. I'm the happiest girl in the whole world. Cool, congrats. Sorry, Cassia. It must really suck to be you right now. And believe me, I feel so terrible about all this. Really, you should have been the one cradling your newborn baby in a hospital bed right now. I just couldn't resist coming along and stealing your husband. Aren't I just the worst? I'm so sorry, sweetie. Really? I gotta say, though, even I was surprised how quickly I managed to steal this one. We'd barely known each other five minutes before I was pregnant. Must have been fate. Look on the bright side. I might have stolen your happiness, but at least now I get to live my best life. You haven't stolen anything from me. I'm perfectly happy, and nothing you could possibly do will ever change that. You know... You putting on a brave face like this is an equal mix of admirable and tragic. It's okay to be honest about your feelings, you know, babe? We are sisters, after all. Admit it. This sucks, doesn't it? Not only did I steal your boyfriend back then, but now your husband's mine too. And as if that wasn't bad enough, I basically stole your baby on top of it all. I'm not putting a brave face. My husband and son are right next to me. Huh? My real husband and my adorable son are both sat right next to me as we speak. And I can assure you, we're very happy and content. Your real husband? Your son? Wait, what? What are you talking about? Did you get remarried already? How is that even possible? It's not, of course. How could I get remarried in such a short space of time if you just stolen my husband? Look... I'm bored of this now. You seem to be in grips of the mother of all misunderstandings, and it's time to set you straight. I never said Ryan was my husband, not even once. Me and him have never been married. Huh? Excuse me? I got married five years ago, and me and my husband have two kids now. That has been obviously being a person other than Ryan. Ryan's just my ex-boyfriend from college. We dated for two months before I ended it. He was jealous, controlling, manipulative liar. He stopped me going out to see my friends, smashed up my phone, and wrecked my apartment. I finally managed to get rid of him when he basically tried to kidnap me and drag me off to live with him and his parents in the middle of nowhere. After that, he stalked and harassed me for months on end. Thankfully, I haven't seen him in years now. Huh? No, 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 no. Wait, what? There has to be some kind of mistake. What are you talking about? Jealous? Controlling? Manipulative? He smashed up your phone? He wrecked your apartment? Kidnap? Stalking and harassment? What the? Explain! Oh no. Don't tell me you married him without knowing any of this. I gave in and started dating him after he practically begged me to give him a chance. But he completely changed from the moment we got together. He banned me from speaking to other guys, took my phone, and deleted every guy from my contact list. He stopped me going outside during the day because he said guys might try hitting on me. When I told him I wasn't going to be a prisoner in my own home, he snatched my phone, threw it on the floor, and stomped it to pieces. Um... That was when I knew he was seriously bad news, so I told him I was breaking up with him. After that, he started showing up in my apartment day and night. He'd bang on the door and yell at the top of his voice like some escaped mental patient. Only leaving when I told him the police were coming, or he heard the sirens. One night, when he'd been drinking particularly heavy, he kicked my door clean off its hinges. What? Then he barged his way in, restrained me, and ordered me to drop out of college and move in with him with his parents in the countryside. He just kept yelling, You will be my bride! You will be my bride! Like a man possessed. I genuinely felt like he was actually going to kidnap me and drag me off to the countryside right then and there. Thankfully, one of the neighbors had heard the commotion and called the police, who piled into the house and arrested him the moment they saw what was going on. With that, what I was sure was about to turn into an actual kidnapping attempt was thwarted, and I thought my nightmare was over. But then they released him on bail and he started stalking me. I was so terrified and desperate to get away from him, I moved out of the state. But he followed me. Wait a sec, this can't be. Are you saying he lied about you and him being married? Are you saying I just gave birth to a baby with a man who wasn't your husband? Firstly, most normal people don't go around trying to give birth to their sister's husband's children. Secondly, no. 
he was never, ever my husband. I'm guessing he thought he could get close to you by lying about me and him being married and use this as his way in to resume his obsessive harassment campaign against me. Knowing what he's like, he's most likely manipulating you, using you as a tool to get to me. No, there has to be some kind of mistake. This can't be happening. Did Ryan trick me? The fact that you didn't know about any of this until I just told you means that yes, he did. He's been hiding his true colors from you this whole time. But something tells me you'll be seeing them before long. Now you're married with a kid. He has you trapped right where he wants you. And you have no way out. Huh? Trapped? I'm guessing he'll propose to you and him move in with his parents in the countryside over the coming days or weeks. And when I say countryside, I mean so far out in the sticks that you barely even get a cell phone signal. I never got to meet his folks. But I'm guessing since he was so desperate to move me in with them during this reign of terror, they must be just like him. Something tells me things are about to get real rough for you, Elisa. What? No, 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 no! No! You, you can stop it now. You've had your fun. This is all one big silly pr prank, isn't it? I'm not laughing, you know. Whether you believe me or you don't is entirely up to you. But surely you understand now why I didn't want any compensation from you? Because Ryan isn't my husband, and he never was. I had no right to ask you for money, and you had no reason to give me any. What the hell, Cassia? You're horrible! Evil! How could you let me do something like this? Why didn't you tell me anything? Oh, is this somehow my fault now? That's funny, because from where I'm standing, it looks like you got absorbed in these absurd, misunderstood delusions all on your own. Don't go blaming me for the best you made. B but what am I supposed to do now? Help! What do I do? Tell me, please. You're married with a baby now. Ugh. I had no idea Ryan was that kind of guy. You let me walk right into this. You let me... Please help, Cassia. I'm begging you. You know him, right? What should I do? I don't want to get myself dragged into the middle of nowhere to live with the freaking Adams family. What am I supposed to do? This is way above my pay grade. You're better off asking a professional. Or how about you just deal with it yourself? You're the one who chose to marry and have a kid with the guy. That's only because he said he was your husband. I wouldn't have looked at him twice otherwise. I thought if you married him, he must be a decent guy. I had no idea about this. Oh, gee, he sounds like a freaking lunatic. Am I in danger? I am, aren't I? You're the stupidest person I've ever met. Let's face it, you'd have to be a moron to fall for a lie like that. If you must blame someone, blame yourself. Oh, gee, Cassia, we're sisters, family. Help me. I'm begging you, I'll do anything. Nope. This really is goodbye because I'm blocking you now. I wish you nothing but good fortune and happiness. Not long after that, Elisa and her son were both discharged from the hospital in good health. But before she even had time to process what was going on, Ryan showed his true colors, ordering her to quit her job and move in with him and his parents out in the countryside, just as I predicted. My psychotic ex and his parents then immediately took Kaisa's baby boy, preventing her from seeing him at all, and forced her to be their living maid. When my dad found out about what had happened, he embarked on a heroic one-man crusade to rescue his unfortunate daughter from the clutches of her deranged captors. This morning, after a long drive through the night, he barged his way into Ryan's parents' house, which quickly descended into scenes of indescribable chaos. The carnage is still going on as we speak. This is inevitably going to lead to divorce. But knowing Ryan, it's a battle that will be as vicious and hostile as they come. I hate to say it, but this is why it's probably not a good idea going around trying to steal other people's boyfriends and husbands. What goes around comes around. For my poor mother, who had put up with Elisa and my dad's shenanigans for far too long, this was a straw that broke the camel's back. She finally committed to the divorce she'd been thinking about for years. The moment she found out dad was away in the country, she used his absence to file the papers and move in with her parents. How do I know all of this, you ask? 
I found out through one of my mom's relatives. I can't tell you how relieved I was when I heard. I finally deleted Elisa's number, which I'd only held on to all these years for my mom's sake. Soon, I'm planning on heading over to see her for the first time in almost a decade. Here's to mending fences. Hey, Becky. Are you really having a wedding ceremony? You have enough money for that? My husband makes good money. Do you want us to loan you some? Oh, but you probably wouldn't be able to pay it back. Yeah, forget what I said. You can't borrow any money. <laughs> We're more than capable of planning a ceremony within our means. Really? You sure? Kieran, I really don't know why you felt the need to have the same conversation with me every day, but being a two-income family does not make us poor. Some people like me have jobs they just like doing, even if their husband makes enough money to support the family by himself. But like, my husband Kyle works at a huge company that pays him a ton of money, so I don't need to work. Why would you work if you don't have to? That just shows your husband doesn't make enough. I feel bad for you. <laughs> I'll thank you to not badmouth Trent to me. No matter what you may think, he's my husband and I'm proud to be his wife. Also, you really need to get with the times and realize that there's more than one way to make a marriage work these days. And you probably shouldn't make those kind of remarks to anyone. <laughs> Why not? You're only going to embarrass yourself. What's embarrassing about telling the truth? <laughs> Okay, well, don't blame me when you lose all your friends. Oh, you're just jealous because you're dirt poor. I wonder what sort of wedding poor couples have. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> you're unbelievable. Hey, again, congratulations on your wedding. I hate to do this one minute before the service, but I decided not to go. Bye-bye. <laughs> Huh? Kyrian, I wondered when you were going to show up, but now I see that you canceled. One minute before the service started? Jeez, such odd timing. Almost seems intentional. Was this your plan all along? Aren't you a smarty pants? Yep, that was the plan. If you didn't want to come, you could have just said so from the start. I wasn't forcing you to come or anything. But it was way funnier this way. <laughs> You think this is funny? Oh, it is pretty funny, isn't it? Think about it. One minute before the service? It would have been better if you noticed sooner. <laughs> oh, that would have been awesome. I can just imagine the frustrated look on your face as you walk down the aisle. <laughs> oh, also, I didn't want to waste a gift on you. What do you mean, waste? You just pawn whatever we gave you to get money to pay your bills, wouldn't you? I'd feel kind of sad if the present we spent so much time and effort looking for ended up in some dirty pawn shop window. I'd rather just get something for myself or go on a group trip or something. And so, I'm going on a trip right now. <laughs> Good for you. So we won't be coming to the wedding. Whatever, have fun. Ooh, somebody's angry. If that's how you would have acted, I'm actually really glad you didn't come. Hope you don't get too sad about us not giving you a present. <laughs> we already have everything we need in-house and didn't expect a gift from you or anyone else. Oh, wow. How much did you have to borrow to buy all that stuff? Nothing. So you stole it. The reception is starting. I'm going to go now. Enjoy the hot dogs and macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Hey, Becky! You there? Kieran? What do you want now? Is the wedding over? Of course it is. It's been over for hours now. Oh, I didn't make it. But there's an after party, right? Uh, yeah. But I doubt you'd be interested. Us being revolting peasants and all. Ugh, are you still mad about that? Anyway, we came back for the party. Why? Sisters don't keep secrets, Becky! Why didn't you tell me your husband was a famous YouTuber? How did you... Aunt Grace posted a picture on social media. No, I'm pretty sure I've told you about him before. No, you didn't. He doesn't use his real name on his channel. I had no idea. 
A lot of artists use stage names. His offline personality is way different from his videos, so a lot of people he meets never even notice who he is. A bunch of his big YouTuber friends are there too! It's all over social media! I want to meet them too! This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity! Oh, and Kyle is a big fan of your husband's. Can he get an autograph? I just subscribed to his channel too, so after he signs one for Kyle, I want my own autograph. Oh, and I want him to sign it, the lovely Kieran. You're unreal. So, where's the party? You're not invited. Huh? Do you think I would just say, sure, Becky, come on over, after you belittled me like that? You canceled on the wedding a minute before it started. Mom and Dad are furious, and so are Trent's parents. Everyone knows what you said to me. Fortunately, they don't hold your atrocious behavior against me at all. But do you have any idea how much you've hurt us all today? What's your problem? We're here now, aren't we? Can't we just let bygones be bygones? No, you idiot. Why not? Because you're awful, that's why. Mm, I want to come to the party. I can't miss this chance to meet so many famous people. My wedding isn't a meet and greet. Oh, would you grow up already? Tell me where the party is. Never. Come on. Go home. You're so mean. <laughs> Kyle got fired. Huh? It's all your fault, Becky. What are you talking about? Ever since Trent banned Kyle from his live shows, Kyle's been in a massive depression. He started taking time off of work, but I guess he forgot to call into his company, so they fired him for consecutive no-shows. Oh, the ban. That's what this is about. Why did he get banned? Kyle is Trent's biggest fan, and now they're brothers-in-law. Trent can't ban his own brother-in-law. I heard what happened from Trent. Kyle name-dropped Trent to try to get into the venue without a ticket. And when that didn't work, he tried to force his way in. The venue security tried to restrain him, and he went crazy, so they had to call the cops. How could he not get banned after that? He has only himself to blame. But why did he have to get fired? Isn't it obvious? Everyone knows that you have to call into work when you take time off. Most companies have rules about no-shows like that. But he's super sad! Shouldn't they give him a break given the circumstances? Nope. Really? You never had a job in your life, so you may not know this, but the real world isn't a very forgiving place. Also, if Kyle wasn't feeling up to calling in sick himself, you could have called in for him since you're his wife and all. Didn't you think about that? Why would I have to do it for him? Ah, so you didn't then. Are you saying this is my fault? You can interpret it however you want, but I've got to get back to work. I have a ton left to do before I can go home today. Oh, that's right, a job. What now? Get your company to give Kyle a job. What? I heard you actually work for a pretty big company, so... Tell him to look in the Help Wanted ads. Why would he do that when he has a connection like you? What kind of power do you think I have here? I'm just a regular employee. But... Not to mention, Kyle was dead weight at his old company. Dead weight? One of my friends I invited to the wedding works at the same company. He told me all about Kyle. Even if I were in the position to be able to get someone hired into the company on my recommendation, I wouldn't ruin my reputation by recommending Kyle. That's not fair! If Kyle doesn't have a job, what am I gonna do? I'm a housewife! How about you work until Kyle finds a new job? Me? Why would I do that? I got married so I wouldn't have to work. That was one of my conditions when I agreed to marry Kyle. So I'm not gonna work, no way. Oh, okay. Well, have fun being broke then. No! That's what I'm trying to avoid. That's why I need your help, Becky. Kieran, let me be very, very clear. I would never in a million years lift a single finger to help someone who insulted my beloved husband and me. Please? You and Kyle are going to have to figure this out yourselves somehow. That's what couples do. Becky! Welcome to the real world. Figure it out yourself and get a job, you moocher. Aw, Becky, please! 
The more desperate you become for my help, the less likely I will ever help you. You really won't help me? Mom and Dad feel the same way, so don't go crawling to them asking to move in with them. You're on your own. <sighs> there goes Plan B. Why are you doing this? Why are you making me get a job? Because you're a lazy, spoiled brat. Come on, can't you give me anything at all? I have nothing more to say to you. Becky, don't go! Please, Becky, I don't want to have to work! Their impending bankruptcy must have gotten Kyle to come back to his senses, because he immediately started looking for work. Unfortunately, word of his repeated no-shows got around, so finding a place that would take him proved difficult. He eventually landed a part-time job at a supermarket and is aiming to work his way up to store manager. Kieran isn't satisfied with his drastically reduced pay and constantly nagged him to make more money. Kyle got tired of her refusal to work, so he threatened to divorce her unless she got a job. Kieran called his bluff and said, you wouldn't dare. But guess what? He dared. She tried to come crying to me for help again when the divorce was finalized, but I ignored her. It seems like she came to her senses too, and she's currently working the night shift cleaning the floors at a local dive bar. I'm glad to see she's at least taken her first step toward being a normal adult human being, but we'll see how long she lasts. Hey, are you there, Tilly? Good morning, Lucia. What's the matter? Could you pick up my child and take care of him for a while? What? I'm busy, unlike you, so just do it for me, okay? Hold on. This is just too sudden. Why do I need to take care of your child? Well, I inherited the ownership of a luxury hotel my mother-in-law owned when she was hospitalized. That's the first time I heard that. It starts from today. A large group of visitors is going to be staying during the weekend, so I'm going to be really busy. Which is why I'm asking you, the mother who looks like she has the most time on her hands, to take care of my child. I'll probably be asking similar favors of you from now on, okay? Wait, hold on. That hotel! My husband and I are going to be staying there over the weekend. Huh? What? Oh, you at a luxury hotel? We made a reservation six months back. Oh, what's the occasion? It's me and my husband's 15th anniversary. His parents are going to be taking care of his son, so there's no way I'll be able to manage your child as well. Are you sure about this? Huh? The lodging expenses are $500 per night. Someone as poor as you won't be able to stay here. <laughs> we already made the reservation, so we obviously know the prices. You knew and still made the reservation? You don't seem to be getting it. This is a luxury hotel. It's not some cheap lodging people like you go to. Do you understand? Of course I understand that's a luxury hotel. But we're not as poor as you think we are, you know? Hmm, is that so? Anyways, I won't be able to take custody of your child. My husband and I have plans to stay at your hotel this weekend. We look forward to it. Good morning, Lucia. Is now a good time? Oh, if it isn't Tilly. So you decided to take care of my child for me after all? I'm talking about our reservations. We tried checking in earlier, but we were told it was canceled. What? The concierge even said that we had to pay the cancellation fee in full since the cancellation was made this morning. But I don't remember making any cancellations and neither does my husband. Care to explain what's going on? What do you mean explain? If it was canceled, it was canceled. That's all there is to it. Could you just pay the cancellation fees and go home? I'm busy preparing for the group of visitors right now. Just because we're friends doesn't mean I can give you special services. So go home. <laughs> but we didn't cancel it. Even if we can no longer stay here, I'm not going home until I get a satisfactory answer. I said it was canceled. That's all there is to it. If you won't go home, I'll call the police. Fine. I'll just ask Mrs. Eleanor, the real owner of this hotel. What? My mother-in-law? Is there anyone else? I wasn't going to call her since she's in the hospital, but an acquaintance of mine who works here as a waitress said she's fine now. Apparently, she can give orders in case something happens, so I'll ask her. Um, what? 
How do you know her contact information? You know one of our waitresses? Tilly! <coughs> Lucia. Oh, finally, a reply! What did you do? I told Mrs. Eleanor about what happened. She told me to tell you that you're fired. Oh, uh, what? She also said don't call yourself the owner when you're just a waitress. She said she might have to fire you from your job as a waitress as well. Why? It's true I was a waitress until now, but my husband has no female relatives, so I automatically become this hotel's proprietress now that Miss Eleanor is hospitalized. I was just trying to take over for her. Why am I fired? I told Mrs. Eleanor that her reservation was canceled abruptly, so she asked the front desk about it. Uh, when they checked the security footage for this morning... Security footage? They saw you canceling our reservations. What? Apparently you have high quality security cameras that can capture screens clearly. The cameras were that good? Apparently, that being the case, Mrs. Eleanor said that the fake propertyess Lucia Harper needs to pack her bags and go home. No, but this is my chance now that my mother-in-law is in the hospital. Mrs. Eleanor is probably going to contact you later, but apparently she asked her nephew, who's experienced running a hotel, to take care of things while she's gone. What? Mrs. Eleanor's hospitalization was so sudden, so apparently she just got here. What? She's already here? Apparently, she was already going to come here next month to train under Mrs. Eleanor. What? I wasn't the one who was going to inherit the hotel? She said the staff was already told about it. You didn't hear? Um... I find it difficult to believe that someone who can't even listen announcements is fit to become the next propertess. Not to mention that she just cancels the reservations of customers. What? You're the one to blame! Poor people like you shouldn't come to luxury hotels in the first place! I was just trying to make sure you didn't throw away all your money! Stop messing around! Why do you keep calling me poor? But the things you wear are always so shabby! What, shabby? You only wear cheap clothes from fast fashion stores! The fact that you live with your husband's family too? You have to depend on your husband's parents since you have no money, right? <laughs> Is that why you keep calling me poor? You are probably lying back there too. You mean how Mrs. Eleanor's nephew is in charge while she's gone? Yes, it's all a lie, isn't it? There's no way someone like you knows Miss Eleanor's contact information anyways. I know her contact information from work. What? Work? I'm a writer for a travel magazine. Huh? The waitress I said he was my acquaintance. She's the one who showed me around when I wrote an article on the hotel. A writer for a travel magazine? You? I stopped writing when I got married and had children. But I decided to start doing it again thanks to my son and husband's support. I told my husband's parents about it, and I was able to get a job writing a special article for a travel magazine my brother-in-law is the chief editor of. The theme was, luxury hotels a couple would go to for their 15th anniversary. Uh, a special article for a travel magazine? And you chose this hotel? Yes, the plans for an interview were ruined thanks to you though. Uh, well... While Mrs. Eleanor was checking the security footage, I was explaining the situation to my brother-in-law. Thanks to you, they have nothing to put in the special feature section, and trying to figure out what to do. But why not just pretend there was never any cancellation? There are rooms available, so everything will be alright if you just stay there instead, no? I think that's impossible. Why? The room me and my husband were supposed to stay at is now the playhouse of your children, because you can find anyone to take care of them, right? Uh... One of the waitresses checked the room because of complaints from the other customers. Apparently, they destroyed the shelves and cabinets, and wrote on the walls and floors with a marker. The room was a mess, she said. You're kidding! I was planning on making that room the center of my article, but it seems that's impossible now. I had no idea this would happen. Also, 
It seems your children were taken away and scolded in the staff room. What? Where was their mother during all this? Um, well... You should probably just show yourself in this situation. Tilly! Answer my calls! Oh, what should I do? My husband divorced me! Oh, hi, fake propertis. Oh, don't call me that, will you? During yesterday's mess, you were cheating on your husband with another guy in one of the rooms, weren't you? Um... Not only that, but you pretended to be in charge and made a mess of things, even ruining one of the hotel's best rooms. The article which was supposed to give your hotel some publicity was delayed, along with the campaign that was planned to start with its release. No wonder you were divorced. Oh, can't you do something about this? My husband is suing me for the cheating! That alone is enough to make my head hurt! But I have to pay for the damages my kids paid to the room and all sorts of other fines. I don't even have a job anymore now that I was fired. Oh, is that so? That must be tough. <laughs> yes, it is! Good luck. <laughs> huh? What's with your tone? I'll block you now. Wait! <laughs> I'm being asked to pay a huge amount of money! What am I supposed to do on my own? <coughs> Tilly! I couldn't really have done anything if I wanted. I heard Lucia's parents cut ties with her after this incident, and her husband got custody of their child after the divorce. She isn't close with any of her other relatives either, so she's completely on her own, basically. The guy she was cheating on her husband with, too, disappeared after paying the fine. She now lives alone in a tiny apartment, without even enough money to move even if she wanted to. Apparently, she works part-time jobs, but is basically useless when it comes to work. Even though she's got tons of debt, it seems that it's only a matter of time before she gets fired again. Tessa. Tessa, are you there? That guy you brought over to the house today, what was his name again? Max? Is it true he's a top executive at a Fortune 500 company? Um, where did that come from all of a sudden? Besides, why are you asking me all this over text when we live in the same house? You're welcome to come and talk to me whenever you like, you know, sis. I would, but I'm taking a nice relaxing soak in the tub right now. Anyway... Why are you asking about what Max does for a living in the first place? I hate to be rude, but that's none of your business. Dear, what are you even saying? Of course it's my business. This is my future brother-in-law we're talking about here. We'll be family soon. Not only that, but with both his parents being gone and him not being in touch with the rest of his family anymore, he'll be marrying into our family and taking our name, right? I'm pretty sure I remember you saying that which is why I have to go to every effort to make sure we get along like a house on fire. Why would you put a heart on the end of a message talking about how well you're going to get along with my boyfriend? That's kind of weird. Oh, don't be so paranoid, Tessa. I was just being playful. I didn't mean anything by it. Let me make this clear. I know you've had unquenchable desire to get your claws into anything and everything that was mine ever since we were kids, but I promise you... You will not be taking Max from me. Huh? Don't play dumb, Vivian. You know full well you stole my boyfriend back in high school. The thing you should know about Max is, he hates people like you, who only see the world through the lens of money and personal gain. No matter how desperately you contrive, scheme, and struggle, it's hopeless. So you better give up now before you embarrass yourself. Oh, aren't you such a charmer. I feel blessed that my little sister has such a high opinion of me. You really don't know what the hell you're talking about, do you, little girl? You ride around on your high horse pretending you're little Miss Perfect while looking down on others. But money makes the world go round. Always has and always will. And that's the damn truth whether you like it or not. It's simple. When there's a big, juicy pot of gold sat right before your eyes, you take it. 
That's just the way of the world, sweetie. I see you haven't learned anything from last time. It's precisely because you think like that. That you got hit with that massive compensation claim for stealing another woman's husband. Really? You're gonna drag that up? That whole thing's practically ancient history now. What was that, seven years ago? I paid my compensation like a good girl. So, what's the problem? Anyway, what's done is done. No use crying over spilled milk, sweetie. Really? Spilled milk? <laughs> I can't believe your attitude. Anyone would think you got fined for tossing a chocolate wrapper on the pavement. Did you completely forget about how Dad was forced to retire from his job early? So he could use his entire pension fund to pay off the compensation for you? Not only that, but you didn't even show an ounce of remorse. Mom clearly didn't mind a bit how reprehensively you'd behave because she covered for you from start to finish. The most astonishing thing was that she actually had the nerve to blame Dad for losing a chunk of his pension by retiring early to get you out of the mess you made and ended up divorcing him. The only reason we didn't end up homeless is because I dropped out of college to work three jobs to keep the rent paid and food on the table. Which part of that is spilled milk? You're awful. Are you done now? Finished? Satisfied? Phew, but you never stop talking. You know what, sis? I'm like so crazy bored of talking to you right now that my head hurts. I think I'm just gonna leave it there. You're the one who messaged me. Cool, whatever. I'm gonna get out of the tub soon and head to bed. I don't need your incessant nagging interrupting my beauty sleep. Ugh, why must you be like this? Hey, Tessa. What the hell do you think you're playing at? Explain. What are you talking about? Would you mind not sending me random aggressive messages like this? I'm at work right now. I heard you and Max got engaged last night and you've already sent in the marriage registration papers. Is that true? Yes, it's true. We're getting married. What's it to you? How could you? Huh? Are you asking me how I could get engaged to my boyfriend? Is that a crime? Don't play dumb. It's me Max has feelings for, not you. Say what now? There's no way he would be signing the marriage registration papers willingly. You forged his signature and handed them in yourself, didn't you? Admit it. Um, no. We love each other, and we signed them together. Besides, I'd probably get arrested if I did that. Ooh, now that's music to my ears. You sat alone in your jail cell, alone and miserable, crying yourself to sleep at night. Just the thought alone gets me excited. Me and Max could finally be open about our love for each other, and you wouldn't be there to stand in our way anymore. Candlelit dinners, fancy restaurants, days out on the beach. <sighs> I gotta call the cops right now. I'm pretty sure I told you. I didn't forge the papers. Are you done fantasizing now? You're creeping me out. Liar. Listen, Vivian. What? Do you have any conception of how delusional you are? Is there even a shred of self-awareness in there? Huh? Me and Max are going to be living together starting tomorrow. I'd appreciate it if you accepted he's not interested in you and refrain from doing anything embarrassing for all of our sakes. What did you say? You two are moving in together tomorrow. That's right. I thought I told you this before. I told you we were thinking about tying the knot, and that if we did, he'd move in with us here. Oh yeah, I do remember you saying that. Ah, oh, I get it now. Whatever am I going to do with that oaf? He can be so distant sometimes, but I guess communication never was his strong point, huh? He's going about this in a really roundabout way, but I understand now. I wonder if it's just because he's shy? It's actually kind of cute. What are you talking about? What do you understand? Oopsie. Nothing. Don't mind me. Just thinking out loud. Um, okay. In that case, I've got some cleaning to do. Time to turn my bedroom into the ultimate love nest. Can you imagine how embarrassing it'd be if my room was full of garbage when I invited him in? You don't have to worry about that because there's absolutely zero chances of him ever going in your room under any circumstances. You might feel confident now, but you won't be saying that for long. I promise.
promise, sweetie. Hey, Max. Are you ready for today's move? Sup, babe? Yep, all my stuff's thrown in the van and I'm ready to go. It's not much, but I partitioned a section of my room off as a mini office for you to do your work in. I'm sorry it's a little cramped, but I hope you like it. Thanks so much, babe. You're the best. Don't worry about that. As long as my desk and chair fit, I'm happy. But Max, are you sure about this? Are you sure you want to live under the same roof as my mom and sister? Didn't you yourself say you're getting sick and tired of my sister's relentless texting? She hasn't left you alone for the last six months. It's bordering on harassment now. Maybe it's not the ideal situation, but we already talked about this, babe. It's just a stepping stone, right? We'll have our own place someday, and your mom and sister's shenanigans will be a thing of the past. Yeah, I guess. Besides, being bombarded with creepy texts for six months pales in comparison to the 20 years you've had to endure with them. I totally get that you're going to feel anxious about me moving in with you, all when you know more than anyone what a nightmare they can be. You just have to believe in me. Of course I believe in you. It's just... Walking into the lion's den mean you're basically guaranteed to have to put up with far worse than anything you've had to endure so far. And the thought really worries me. It's fine, don't sweat it. You don't have to worry, I'm totally chill about it. Nothing can surprise me already if I... Nothing can surprise me if I already expect it, right? I know what I'm getting myself into here, but if living under the same roof as the terrible two is what it takes for us to finally get to live together, then so be it. Anyway, fretting is officially banned from here on out. Leave the rest to me, okay? Okay, I understand. Thank you. I'll always be by your side. Don't forget that. If there's ever anything you need me to help you with, just say the word. Tessa, are you there? This is urgent. Answer me. Is Max unemployed? Huh? I just stopped by your room to say hi to him. Um, Vivian? Who the hell do you think you are? I told you never to go into my room without permission. Get a grip. I don't take orders from you. Anyway, back to the point. I haven't seen him leave for work once. I just chalked it down to him probably being on vacation or something for the first week. But it's been an entire month now, and all he does is sit up there in that room. I do think he might be one of those remote workers everyone's been talking about lately. So I went up to your room to check. You'll never believe what I saw when I did. He was watching some kind of cartoon or game or something. You know the ones that kids are always talking about these days. What do they call it again? Anime? Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it, I don't think I told you Max quit his job. He did what? Why would he throw away a top position at a major company? Has he lost his mind? He quit a month ago. Wait a sec. That's when he moved in with us. He can go. So right from the beginning, this was all just a ploy for him to leech off us so he could sit on his backside eating potato chips and watching anime? Huh? He's a neat shut-in! You tricked us! We've been had. Um, but aren't you a neat shut-in yourself? Don't you worry about me. We're talking about your parasitic partner here. What I do is not your concern. The only reason we agreed to him moving in with us in the first place was because of his humongous salary. What use is he to us now? Eventually, my aim was to snatch him from you. He'd divorce you, we'd get married, and we'd live happily ever after, with me never having to work another day in my life. Wow, you're still fantasizing over this crap? You need professional help. Ugh. Don't be ridiculous. Anyone would be thinking the same thing in my situation. Besides, I'm the special kind of prize that's only available to guys with fat wallets. To think he was actually dumb enough to voluntarily throw away a job most guys would kill for and ruin his chances with a beauty like me in the process? This makes no sense! I know he's crazy about me, so what would possess him to choose a life of eternal misery with you by intentionally relegating himself to the bottom of the social hierarchy? Is he crazy? He must have actually lost his mind. It's the only logical explanation for this. You're so delusional, it's scary. Huh? Sorry, I was just thinking out loud. I have to discuss this with mom immediately. There's no sense in marrying a man who's not capable of providing for me. I'm both confused and astonished by the fact you seem to think Max would ever have any interest in providing for you at all. In any case, there's no point in marrying him anymore. 
He's nothing but a tragic, poverty-stricken shadow of his former self. I'd say he deserves pity, but he only has his former self to blame. You can have him back. I tell you what, I'll gift wrap him with a nice ribbon for you. He was never yours in the first place. You keep telling yourself that, you jealous little girl. I'm gonna speak to mom now. You'll be hearing from us this evening after we deliberate on how to deal with you both. I'd prepare for the worst if I were you. Max, how did it go? Are you alright? Hey Tessa, you mean with your sister? Yeah, she just messaged me. She's absolutely furious. Like, totally losing it. What did she say? To summarize, she thinks you came here to leech off of her and Mom. She also changed your mind about trying to steal you and says you no longer have any value to her. <laughs> oh, I thought she might say something like that. I could almost see the blood rushing to her head when she walked into my room. She went as red as a tomato and practically had steam coming out of her ears. She yelled, You good for nothing penniless parasite before storming out and slamming the door in a rage. Max, are you enjoying this? <laughs> Whoops, is it that obvious? <laughs> good grief, what am I going to do with you? <laughs> oh, sorry, babe. Couldn't help myself because that's literally exactly how I expected her to react. She's so predictable. Anyway, her and your mom just went out together in a huff. I'm guessing they need some fresh air to cool their heads. It's time to advance the final stage of our plan. Mm, okay, so all I have to do is go to the other house, right? Yep, you got it. I'm just about done having our belongings taken over. You have a few bits and pieces left around the house, but I'll bring them with me in the car when I leave. So don't worry about that. Me and you are done here. Thanks so much, Max. Not long now. <laughs> Drive safe. You too, honey. Tessie Kins. After much deliberation, me and Mom have decided on how to deal with you both. First of all, Max. It's such a shame how things went with him. We had such high hopes. We're severely disappointed in his behavior. We very kindly allowed him into our home on account of his humongous salary. For him to resign from his company, throwing away both a stable, high-paying career and destroying his hopes of marrying me in the process was both irresponsible and stupid. Accordingly, he now owes me compensation. Firstly, I want everything he put into his pension pot over the years at the company. Secondly, all his savings. Basically, I want everything he's got. Put it simply, he's to leave behind every last cent he owns before getting the hell out of the house and never coming back. As for you, you're to continue providing for me and mom as you've been doing until now. You will also divorce loser boy immediately. Thought my phone would never stop buzzing. Why did I have a feeling it might be you? Anyway, where are you? D did you get out? Are you working overtime? No, nope, wrong. Then you get your ass back to this house and get rid of this sweaty, Cheeto dust covered neckbeard this instant. If you're talking about Max, he already moved out. Huh? He did? I guess I can't blame him. It must have been pretty painful to find out he ruined his chances with me. Amazing, you still believe that nonsense? I have a question for you, Vivian. So according to your logic, when someone resigns from the job, they become a penniless parasite meat loser, and thus, the only thing for it is to cut all ties with them, right? That's right. I'm so relieved he accepted his uselessness and left without a struggle. I see. It looks like we've got no choice but to cut all ties with you then. Huh? You see, I just handed in my own resignation and I'm currently using the last of my paid leave before I say my final goodbyes at the company. What? You did what? All right, I think we're just about done here. I finally get to cut you out of my life forever. Woohoo! What? Tessa, what are you talking about? No, 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 just hold on a minute. If it's money you're worried about, I left behind some money for you in my room. It's not everything we have. Obviously, we'll need the rest for our new life together, but hopefully it's enough to at least help you get by. You did how much? About 750,000. 750,000? Is that enough for you? Y yeah, I guess it is. Okay, uh, fine. In this case, you can go. You have mine and mom's permission. Thanks, sis. Have a nice life. Missed call. Missed call. Tessa, what's the meaning of this? What did you do? What are you thinking? That's weird. I was sure I said I was cutting you out on my life. Do you struggle to comprehend basic English? It's barely been five minutes. Stop it. Be serious. This isn't a laughing matter. That's wrong. The 750000 you left behind. It was toy money. When I opened the briefcase, it was all pretend $100 bills from some kid's board game. Oh, that? 
Max bought those fake bills in the briefcase as a joke for last year's New Year's party at work. Now they're all yours. You can keep the briefcase too. Maybe they'll come in handy when you're homeless. What? Sorry, sweetie. That's all the money we could afford to leave you. Space was getting tight for us and we had no idea where to put it. So we're actually really grateful for you taking it off of our hands. Thanks for helping us declutter. Oh my god, this can't be... Why are you doing this? Huh? Interesting. I was sure you gave us the all clear to leave after I told you how much money you were getting. Did you forget? I only said that because I thought the money was real. Anyway, my dearly beloved sister, I have to remind you that we already cut ties, which makes you a stranger to me now, and I don't message strangers. I mean at this time. And just to be sure, I'm blocking you. Take care. Missed call. Missed call. Missed call. No! With that, both me and my husband blocked by ex-mom and sister, who seemed to be in desperate state of panic. I wonder why they were so upset. Next, we moved into our new house together. We intentionally chose somewhere very far away, so no matter how desperately they look for us, there's no chance we'll ever meet again. By the way, I know you're probably wondering why my husband quit his job. You see, the money he was making from his side job finally surpassed what he brought home from the company. And things were going so smoothly that he decided to go full-time freelancing. I decided to quit my job at the same time to dedicate as much time as possible to helping with the expansion of his business. Now, we're not just husband and wife, but business partners. My jaw almost hit the floor when he agreed to move in with my mom and sister. But turns out there was a reason all along. He told me that when we finally did walk out of their lives for good, he wanted to slam the door in their faces so hard that their world would shake and they'd be left in speechless stupid faction. I think it worked, don't you? My despairing mother, due to having lost her only source of income with me no longer providing for her, turned to black market lenders as a last-ditch effort to stay afloat. Naturally, with no ways of paying back the loans, the interest piled up, and now the pair of them are up to their ears in debt. Last I heard, they're spending their days being terrorized by a gang of scary, bald-headed, leather jacket-clad debt collectors who don't take no for an answer. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.